Network Women's Basketball Game of the Week. Georgia's Lady Bulldogs ready to run out of the tunnel into the recently renovated Stegman Coliseum. We are in Athens as Georgia is set to host Florida. I'm Kara Capuano, joined as always by Duke All-American Abby Wehner. Georgia 3-0 in conference, Florida seeking a rare road win. What do you expect we'll see today? Well, Georgia, they're a team that's playing with a lot of confidence right now, coming off of two really good road wins. They're a great rebounding team. Conversely, Florida, they're going to have to get on the boards, create some options from their defense, an area in which they struggle. Lots of options. Which stars are we watching, Abby? Well, it just so happens both stars played high school ball in Georgia. It started with Jordan Jones. She's a three-point shooter for the Lady Gators, and she's a great team leader, brings experience for Florida. And on the other side, freshman Kalita Miller playing with a ton of confidence right now. She hit a game winner at Arkansas. Had an answer for every bucket Kentucky had. She's a great player right now for the Bulldogs. Holiday Miller, two-time back-to-back SEC Freshman of the Week. Parody, a theme early in this conference season. Which teams will start to separate themselves? Tip-off coming up next. Bulldog Spirit Squads riling up the fans. A whole lot of red on a Sunday afternoon in Stegman Coliseum as we take a look at the starting lineups. Abby, the Gators employing their seventh different starting lineup this season. You've got Jatera Bonds, Dina Allen in the backcourt with Jones, Madu, and Stewart in the frontcourt. For Georgia, a very familiar lineup. Number 10, Jasmine James. Number 12, Jasmine Hassel. Coach Andy Landers telling us both, another year older and wiser. They're sophomores now, but why did Coach Butler decide to change it up for Florida? Both Dina Allen and Dee Dee Madu, players are playing really good in SEC play. She's simply putting her best players on the floor. Andy Landers has led the Lady Bulldogs to 31 straight winning seasons, 27 NCAA tournament bids. Meantime, on the other end, you've got the Dean contrasted by the youngest coach in the SEC, Amanda Butler, in her fourth season as Florida's head coach. She actually led the Gators to their first NCAA tournament appearance as the point guard back in 1993. Getting ready to tip off at Stegman Coliseum. Coach Butler Fiery, you can tell the type of players that she's recruiting, she told us this morning, Abby, very much in her image. To use her verbiage, she said she likes a player that will scratch your eyes out to win. It's aggressive. That's the <laughs> kind of player you want, though. And you asked her, is that the kind of player you were like? And she said, you know, some people might have said that. <laughs> <laughs> she said her mentor and, of course, her coach, the great Carol Ross, told her early on, you've got to recruit players that you can coach. They want to respond the way that you expect them to. Mirror images, and that's what she's done. Felicia Phillips and Azania Stewart. Florida controls the tip. Already a foul, Abby. That one called on Didi Madu, her first. And, and not a really good way to start off the game if you're Didi Madu. Finally getting nod for the starting lineup. You want to be aggressive, but you don't want to grab any cheap fouls to begin the game. 
Jasmine James brings it up court for the Lady Bulldogs. Looking into Portia Phillips. The 21 denied the opportunity for early establishment. Oh, well, creative ball handling there. Some might call it that. <laughs> In the lane, an offensive rebound for Florida. Madhu keeps it alive, and that is a travel for Dina Allen in just her fourth start of the season, number 12 for Florida. One of the new players, she's a junior college transfer out of Pensacola. Already two possessions gone awry for Florida. They're a team that's been struggling offensively to score the basketball. They're going to need as many opportunities as they can get tonight. We saw the Lady Bulldogs looking for Portia Phillips from their first offensive set. What is the plan today, Abby? For them, I think it's just being able to be aggressive and take advantage of being at home. They're, they're a great rebounding team. They have a lot of penetrators, a lot of slashers. They're going to have to take good shots. That one, perhaps not the best. Shot clock at 9. That's why James just hurled one up there in the lane. Jordan Jones, the three-point threat, number 33 in blue. Transition. And Kyrita Miller comes up with it. First bucket on the board for Georgia. That was kind of a who wants it more on that break. Other end, fast pace so far. Bonds with the miss, Florida keeps possession. And this is Georgia right here, just creating offense from their defense. You can see they're trapping on ball screens. And Kara, you're exactly right. Who wants it more? Right there, it just so happened to be Miller. Speed helps on that too, a Abby. Bit, a bit. <laughs> Jasmine Hassel hassling Stewart from the perimeter. Another offensive rebound for Madhu. And the three-pointer falls for Bonds. That's the exact kind of play that you can expect out of Jatera Bonds. We'll see Lenita Bartley coming off the bench today for Florida. Very juxtaposing point guards that Bonds can knock down that open shot. Bartley's more of a driver and a slasher. Portia Phillips flashing for the ball. Lady Bulldogs trying to be patient here. Long shot won't fall for Phillips. And it's like every time Florida hauls in a defensive rebound, the afterburners are on. Gators maintain possession as Lenita Bartley gets set to check in and spell Bonds. This was the first game this season that number three for Florida did not start. She was the only Gator who had started every game to this point. And Amanda Butler, she's simply trying to find a combination that's going to work for Florida. Coming off of that game against Tennessee, they're obviously looking at some different lineups. Didi Madu off the dribble with the jumper. The Gators have a 5-2 edge. Phillips trying to work the high-low with Hassel. Instead, Hassel gets a feed from James, and she'll head to the line for the three-point play. Really heads up play by Jasmine James. I like the penetrate and dish. She's a guard who knows how to set her teammates up to be successful. Azania Stewart turns her head. All it takes is a little dish down. Very good and one finish. Jordan Jones called for her first personal foul. And Hassel completes the three-point play to tie this one up. Allen telegraphs the pass. Florida keeps it. Jones for three. That was just a whole lot of space for a shooter of that ability. Outside of the tipped pass, really good execution by Florida. We saw them working on that this morning. They know Georgia's going to apply some 2-2-1 two -two pressure. You want to get it up the sideline, look for that cross pass, kick out when they collapse. Florida, two of three from three-point range. Lady Bulldogs yet to fire one. And call it a block for Stewart. That is the 100th career block for Azania Stewart. Stewart getting some great experience this summer, but she's the really vocal leader for Florida, which is a really good position for her. She's an anchor in the paint. She's in the top 10 in the SEC in blocks. It's really time for her to get going here in SEC play. A couple of substitutions. Jennifer George checks in for Florida and inbounding the ball. Jasmine James. 
got it up top. Dribbles through the double team. But the shot clock at three, can't get the open jumper to fall. Stewart driving on Armstrong. She'll have a chance for a three-point play. Anne-Marie Armstrong just needs to get down and play defense here. She easily gets beat off the dribble by what you would think would be a slower, bigger Azania Stewart. Nonetheless, a great take by Stewart. First personal foul called on Portia Phillips, the only senior on Georgia's roster. Three-point play for Stewart. I really like this matchup here. Lenita Barley, as you can see, a really good on-ball defender, trying to slow down Jasmine James. Will be a really tough assignment all night. The soft feed to Anne-Marie Armstrong, but it's the first turnover for the Lady Bulldogs, and it's the home team trailing by six right now, early in this first quarter in Athens. Our SEC Network Women's Basketball Game of the Week lands us at Georgia, where the Lady Bulldogs find themselves trailing by six to visiting Florida. Abby, what's at stake? Well, if you're looking at Florida Gators, they simply struggle playing at Georgia. It's not that they struggle playing against the Lady Bulldogs, but specifically here and for Georgia, they're one of two teams right now undefeated in a very good SEC conference. Tennessee sitting at the top. Georgia looking to challenge the Lady Balls there. This is the 57th meeting between these two teams. Long-standing, passionate rivalry in the SEC. The block from Meredith Mitchell. Phillips drives on Stewart. Determined. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I saw the block here on this one. Jennifer George is coming over on help side. I don't know. She barely may have been, may have been moving there. Yeah, perhaps moving just a bit, but barely. I really like the attempt by George to get there. Phillips converts the three-point play. First personal foul on George, and it's now a three-point game. George are bringing the pressure, Abby. Well, that's one way to break it. Well, at least she made that basket because she missed Azania Stewart there in the middle about three times. But you know what? If you're going to score, go ahead and take it. <laughs> a 
like the sweet way that she just fled to the basket. <laughs> Meredith Mitchell drives on Stewart. Stewart definitely altered the shot, and now a jump ball, possession arrow to Georgia. And this is what Isaiah Stewart does for Florida's defensive. She can be playing in the middle, not brought away from the paint. It allows her guards to put more pressure on. Guards have been getting beat a little bit, but they can be aggressive on the ball, knowing they have Stewart, the shot blocker, anchoring the middle. Dina Allen checks back in for Jordan Jones. Stewart also taking a spell. DeAndre Young, the freshman, checked in for Florida. New player on the floor as well for the Lady Bulldogs. It's Mika Willis down on the low block. Phillips denied by Deanna Allen. Good defense for Florida. Off the screen, open jumper for James. Florida maintains command with the three-point lead over Georgia. This half-court set we've seen for a while from the Gators in the block. Called a foul, however. And both teams now Mika Willis, sorry. Both teams now sitting into a 2-3 zone as if they're trying to limit that penetration, trying to have the other team force, uh, forcing them to beat them from the outside. I don't know, it looked like a good block to me. Jennifer George. An active few minutes for number 32, the sophomore out of Orlando. Portia Phillips and Tamika Willis check out of the game for Georgia. Anne Marie Armstrong and Jasmine Hassel check back in for the Lady Bulldogs. George hits the second four point edge for the Gators. Again, Lenita Bartley picking up Jasmine James, forcing the ball to go into somebody else's hands. George with the rebound. Florida's doing a great job of team rebounding on the defensive end. Georgia's having a really tough time finding any offensive rebounds. Another offensive rebound for Florida. A lot of hustle and scrap from the Gators, Abby. What, how'd she put it? Uh, fighting. I get that for you. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll scratch your eyes out to win. Eyes out. There we go. Another offensive rebound for Florida. It's like the entire last several minutes have been played at this end. Six offensive boards for the Gators. And Georgia just looking a little lethargic. Nobody's finding anybody to box out. Nobody's really pursuing the basketball. Florida's playing at an entirely different energy level than Georgia. Mitchell sees Hassel in transition. That would have been a tough shot. I was shocked she got it off from her angle to the basket there. Dina Allen for three. That's a big shot for number 12 who got the starting nod today. Not much space, I like it. Catch and shoot, that's a shooter's mentality. Seventeen ten. the Gators lead. Great pass from Anne-Marie Anderson. Put it right on the money for Hassel. And absolutely no help side there for Florida. Georgia really heads up play of looking for that high and low when there's nobody on the weak side. Credit the assist to Anne-Marie Armstrong. And another basket answered by Allen. Miller drives the lane, offensive board hassle, and one. Jasmine Hassel will be shooting to try to complete the three-point play when we return. And we wonder, what were you doing 800 wins ago? We'll explain.
Gators with a five-point edge at Georgia. Florida with its 600th program win earlier this season in a win over Arkansas. And similarly, the Lady Bulldogs with their 800th program win. That also in the win at Arkansas on Thursday night. 800 wins. My goodness, that is such a long stretch of time. And we've done some history for you. January 17th, 1974, the first of those 800 program victories. Richard Nixon was the president. Kiss started their first tour. Abby, name me a Kiss song. That's what I, I thought. I knew you were going to do that. I know you want to rock and roll all night. Come on song. now. Come on. UCLA's historic 88-game win streak ended with that loss to Notre Dame back in 1974. Andy Landers has been the coach here at Georgia in his 32nd year now. Seven SEC championships. As Hassel completes the three-point play, she leads the Lady Bulldogs with eight. And when you look at some of those schools that are part of that elite group, I mean, it's the best in the history. Tennessee, Louisiana Tech, Texas, Stanford, and now Georgia. Andy Landers certainly belongs in that group. Turnover forced, fourth for Florida by Georgia. Yes, Georgia, the 10th program to notch 800 program wins. And a couple of teams eyeing 800 very close. Long Beach State in that group. Belmont, Penn State, Kansas State. The feed down low to Stewart. Kicks it back out. Meredith Mitchell gets a hand on it. She's, she's so active. She is, and she's a great defensive player for Coach Andy Landers. She just has that length. You look at her arms. She does a really good job of getting her entire body in the passing lane to deny those passes. She ends up with a lot of tips and steals. In and out on the jumper for Madhu, but another offensive rebound for the Gators. They're seventh. And a really smart play there by, by Brittany Shine. She let the ball bounce back over the half court line before picking it up again to avoid the over and back call. The drive on Mitchell by Allen, air ball. James in transition. Stuffed by Stewart. She's fired up about that block, Abby. She certainly saved some guard on that possession there. Uh, Nobody picked up the ball, but it's of no matter when you have a Zania Stewart in the middle and really heads up play to keep her hands on the ball and force it off. It looks more like a volleyball block on the net than a <laughs> basketball block. Untraditional, but effective. <laughs> the runner in the lane for Shine. She's been a great scoring force in her true freshman year out of Sacramento, California, her first basket. Tell you what, this is a team that certainly doesn't look like their last game. They lost by 43 points. I'm really impressed with the turnaround Florida has in a matter of back-to-back -back games. 21-15, Gators advantage. The home team in white, Georgia, scrapping to get back into this game. Shot clock at five. Hassel driving on Stewart, and she stepped out of bounds. Third turnover for Georgia. Take a look on the other end. Really good cut by Brittany Shine getting to the basket. Didi Madu doing a great job of finding her. Florida there playing team basketball right now. Didi Madu scored a career high 17 in that win at South Carolina. The Gators won road victory this season. A thrilling finish. Hassel gets a hand on it. Miller tries to save it. But Renika Ransford turned her back on the ball. Well, and a really dangerous place to try and save the ball if you're Colleen and Mill Miller throwing it back across the paint. If anybody was there from Florida, it would have been automatic, too. Turnovers even at four apiece. What is not even is the rebounding right now. The glass dominated by the Gators. And just like that, a turnover jinx, fifth by Florida. And generally, when you're talking about this Florida team, we said they needed to get on the O boards to create more opportunities for themselves. But the way that they're playing offensively right now, you wouldn't think they've had the offensive struggles that they have had the rest of the season. Ransford. 
with the bounce pass down low and a foul before the pass got there. Second foul on Didi Madu. If I were Coach Butler, I really like the way that their aggressive 2 3 zone looked. The way Georgia is scoring right now, a lot of high lows and a lot of dribble penetration, which is really their strength. And now we can see Florida sitting in their 2 3 zone. Madu checks out with the two fouls as Lily Savetti checks in, number 31 for Florida. Quickly creates a double team there. Off James, Gator ball. Great hustle defense from Lily Savetti, who came in to double team, and Hassel just coming in off the bench. Shine at the top, Savetti calling for it. Instant offense, Lily Savetti. She tore her ACL just four games into her freshman year and was awarded a medical hardship, her first basket. Florida ball again. It's like Georgia just can't get started on the offensive end. I, I go back to the energy level. It, it looks like we're watching two very different teams right now in that Florida, they're playing together, they're playing hard, they're hustling after rebounds, they're making the scrappy defensive plays. Georgia, it's very disjointed. There hasn't been much team basketball, hardworking effort by the Lady Bulldogs yet. Turnover for Florida. Seventh of the game for the Gators. On the other end, the shooting for the Lady Bulldogs has been pretty bad. Missing the last five, now last six field goals, and six of 18 from the floor. Miller can't get it going. Offensive rebound, though. Ransford in the lane. Off balance. Force field on the Georgia basket. <laughs> At least they're getting on the boards now. Yes, good call. <laughs> and it looks like a foul on the rebound is going to be called. Oh, that foul on Azania Sturt, her first. Florida right now, they're really going to their bench a lot. And I think that was key when we talked about them having the ability to change their starting lineup. And that Amanda Butler feels like she has a lot of different players right now. She's giving them opportunities to step up and earn their playing time on this team. A multitude of players have done that so far today. Turnover for the Lady Bulldogs. And there's a timeout on the floor. The Gators are in command, cleaning up the glass and dominating on the road. 23-15 the count.
Back at Stegman Coliseum, where both Florida and Georgia have attempted 20 shots. Georgia's only made six. Florida's made nine. Three coming from downtown, Abby. There's no better time to shoot a three than off an offensive board. Very much in the flow. Defense has a tough time of matching up. Florida, they're fighting each other. It's all been very simple basketball plays, drives and kicks, kicking the ball out of the post, doing a really good job of offensive execution. It's pretty remarkable when you consider this young Florida team has only five letter winners back from last year's squad, which played in the postseason WNIT. Jordan Jones, one of those players. Of course, Madhu, Jennifer George, Zania Stewart. But a couple of junior college transfers and freshmen really in the mix. Good team chemistry. Jordan Jones hits the deck. Foul called on Renika Ransford. Kara Capuano and former Duke All-American Abby Wainer joining you on a Sunday afternoon from Stegman Coliseum in Athens, Georgia, where the home team Lady Bulldogs find themselves trailing to Florida by eight. Dina Allen off the mark, back iron. Jump ball called, possession arrow, Florida. Nobody's boxing out on Georgia. I haven't seen anybody do just a really fundamental find your player, bump them, turn around, keep them off the glass. People are hitting the glass, but just not matching up against any Florida players. And Stewart with the finish. She's got five. Ten point advantage now for the Gators. You can feel that Georgia drought. 0 for 8. And we just said three-pointers is a big part of that right now. It can be the great equalizer in basketball. And that Florida, they're knocking them down, and Georgia has only taken one. It's a nice drive penetration from Armstrong across to Willis for her first basket. Jones three to answer no, but another offensive rebound for the Gators. Tara Bonds is doing a really good job of recognizing when to attack off an offensive board and when to pull it back and set another offensive play. Meredith Mitchell picks it up, can't finish. Another heartbreak. And now Willis will head to the line. Mitchell misses point blank. Armstrong misses point blank. Foul called on Dina Allen, her first personal. I've now seen a couple of Georgia players Jasmine Hassel did this earlier in the game where, where they're trying to just catch and shoot in one motion instead of, you know what, get the rebound, come down, give a shot fake, go up, use the glass. They're very rushed on all their layups. Lanita Bartley checks back in for the Gators. Jatera Bonds takes a seat. misses the second. Allen's on the run. She's got Jones in the wing. Bartley is trailing. Gator ball as Hassel checks back in for Willis. Jasmine Hassel has been Georgia's most effective offensive weapon with eight points in this first half. Jones drops it to Young. Blocked by Armstrong. Georgia ball. Really good recovery by Henry Armstrong. You saw that play developing from the very beginning. A play that Georgia scouted today in shoot around. Armstrong really prepared for that high-low pass. Right now, Georgia, where they're getting most of their points? In the paint. They're really going to their strengths, which is attacking the basket. But still, I would like to see them knock, a few, knock down a few outside shots, maybe open up the paint a little bit more. So would Andy Landers, but he'll take that running <laughs> Layup by Mitchell as well. That's a tough shot on the run from a tough angle. Mitchell's first basket cuts Florida's lead to six. Stewart calling for it on Hassel. Shot clock at 10 now for Florida. Allen for three. Jones keeps it alive. That was great teamwork. Everybody was involved in that entire possession for Florida. Couple of substitutions. Hassel 
sits again. Willis comes back in. Jennifer George for Florida. And I love this here. One of the smallest players on the court, Jordan Jones. No, she, she cannot grab the rebound. She just does a simple tip. Allen, great inside pass to Stewart. Everybody is playing on all cylinders right now for Florida. Ransford off the mark on the three. Florida ball. And that's not her game. Ransford, a really quick player. Coming off of the bench, she needs to look to attack the basket, maybe create some things first, and then take that three within the flow of the offense. Gators three of seven from long range. Lady Bulldogs have not hit a three-point basket in this game. Andy Landers is fired up in the huddle right now. If, he, if that doesn't make you want to play better, I, I don't know what will. But what is looking good right now for Georgia is they're trapping defense off of screens. They're forcing Florida, whenever they set an on-ball screen, to pick up their ball right away, then Georgia has the ability and the length to trap and get in those passing lanes. That timeout was called by Amanda Butler, whose two and two conference team is right now pushing one of the last two undefeated teams in conference play. Lady Vols got their fifth SEC win last night in that game day doubleheader against Vandy. But Andy Landers, three and oh, two tough road wins. You can understand his nonplus nature here at home trailing. To be an elite team, you have to be able to get those road wins and then build on them when you go home. You have to use home court to your advantage, and that's not taking away from the wins that they did get at Arkansas and at Kentucky. But to get to that next level, you get a win, and then you become better the next game. Stewart with the last touch. Renika Ransford with the fast hands. Ninth turnover for Florida. Interesting you say you say fast, Kara, because Coach Lansford, um, excuse me, Landers told me before the season that Renika Ransford could very well be one of the quickest players he's ever seen. Whether that's really developed here is, is yet to be seen, but considering some of the players he's had, it's quite the same. Ransford, one of the McDonald's All-Americans to play here at Georgia, the eighth to be exact. Foul called against Azania Stewart to send Ransford to the line as Florida has now committed 18 fouls. So we are in a bonus situation. Well, and if you're Florida, that, that's not the worst thing in the world. Looking at Georgia, it's interesting in that they're third in the SEC in field goal percentage. So they're very efficient from the floor, but they're 11th in free throw percentage. It's not very efficient at all. <laughs> Ransford takes a seat. Kalita Miller, Jasmine James, Meredith Mitchell, the guards for Georgia. Feet down low to George, working on Armstrong. Travel. Tenth turnover for the Gators. You have one criticism about Florida in this first half. How to take care of the basketball on the road. Again, we see Florida now sitting in a 2-3 zone. Georgia has yet to prove themselves from outside. Armstrong, side of the backboard. Jones, that, there would have been a little bit more mustard on that pass. She might have shot that up. Mustard, huh? Mm -hmm. Peters patient in the half court set. Seven on the shot clock now. Stewart kicks it back. Hey, nothing wrong with using the entire backboard. Very heads up play by Jones. She knew that she couldn't get her shot off, and that kind of, of a move is something that hasn't defined Jones offensively, so it's really nice to see her having a little bit vers more versatility to her offensive game. The runner in the lane being hassled by defense, not the Jordan Jones trademark shot, no. <laughs> shot clock at eight now for Georgia. Armstrong baseline. 
Willis with the shot clock at one because Armstrong didn't touch any of the rim. Nice heads up play for Tamika Willis. Jennifer George left all alone, Abby. Coach Anders, I, I wouldn't say he seems exactly happy. And that's on the post players. If you're a guard, that's frustrating. You get a good trap up top, you get the point guard to pick up her dribble, and nobody helps out on help side. You have to be able to rotate over and play team defense. Meredith Mitchell uses every part of the rim but gets her second basket to fall. Still a seven point advantage for the Gators. It feels like it's been that way most of this first half. And Stewart wants that one back. Fortunately, she got it. Xenia Stewart does a very good job of keeping the ball high. Anytime she catches it, she catches it high and goes right up with it. On offensive boards, she keeps it high, goes right up with it. Very tough to defend. The drive for Mitchell. Stewart with the rebound. Allen tries to thread a pass in transition to George. Would not be. But Florida's lead, 33, 24, nine point edge for the Gators behind nine points from Stewart. Welcome back to Athens, where Florida has a nine-point advantage over Georgia Gators shooting 47%. High percentage shots have helped, Abby. It really has. And right here, you look at the breakdown defensively for Georgia. They have a guard really out of any sort of scoring position. They have the trap with the guards up top, but nobody rotates to the middle. Kalita Miller was caught on that weak side, hugging her man instead of getting in the paint where help side should have been. On the other side, heads up play by uh, Florida. Jennifer George now made that basket, taking a rest. She's got five for Florida. How much time are the Gators going to get to inbound the ball? That's what I thought. <laughs> I have a feeling Coach Butler saying, somebody go to the ball. Somebody help her out, or at least just throw the ball high. Hope somebody can get it. 11th turnover for the Gators. SD on the inbounds by the Lady Bulldogs. Let's see if that defense creates some offense. Mitchell. No. Georgia 10 of 32 in this game. 
Carrie Armstrong has had very active defense today, number three in white. She's been playing very smart defense in that she's three-quartering players either if they're on the block or on the elbow. She has long enough arms that she can get a lot of tips. James back to Miller in transition. And then James tries to save it again, and it goes right to Brittany Shine. Well, that moved out of bounds by Meredith Mitchell. Still Florida ball, but active hands from number 11 in white. Brittany Shine checks out. Allen checks back in. Allen. Very comfortable with the jump shot in SEC play, averaging just under eight points a game. She's got seven in this one. Carlotta Miller working on Jordan Jones. One in 33, the stars we told you to watch today, but the post players have been having a bigger impact for both teams. Five on the shot clock for James. Jones with, with the rebound. As Florida can hold for the last shot of the first half. Jones for three. Offensive rebound, and that has defined this first half. Dina Allen with the board and the putback as the buzzer is sounding. And Florida heads to the locker room with a 37-24 advantage over Georgia. 12 offensive rebounds for the Gators. And a great second chance opportunity for Dina Allen. Long miss. Board and a basket. And the Gators with only one road victory this season have the home Lady Bulldogs on the ropes right now. Abby Wainer standing by. Abby? Coach, Floor is really getting on the offensive boards, and your team is having some breakdowns defensively. What do they need to change on that end? Well, first of all, on the offensive end, we need to hit the makeable shots. We've had some easies, and it seems like we've missed almost every single one. Defensively, we're asleep. They're killing us at the five position. They're cutting. They're screening our five. Their five is cutting without screens, getting open. And then nobody on, on the Georgia team is putting a body on anybody when a shot goes up, so they're getting to the offensive boards. Great, Coach. Thanks very much. Abby, thank you. And a really full breakdown from Andy Landers there. And clearly, he is impressed by Florida's post play. Gators up 13. We'll be right back. Welcome into the ESPN3.com Halftime Report. I'm Cassidy Hubbard. Coming up, we'll go inside Jamie Dixon's world and get an all-access look into the Pitt Panthers practice. But first, for the latest on what's happening around college hoops, let's send it over to the college basketball scoreboard crew. Guys, take it away. Cassidy, it was a nail-biter of a day for a lot of big-time teams in college basketball. Steve Bunin, Adrian Branch, let's break it down, starting with number one, Duke. Remember, the Blue Devils lost Wednesday at Florida State, A.B., and they're taking on a Virginia squad, very well coached by Tony Bennett, a system that's hard to play against, and Mustafa Farrakhan knocks down the three, and you can see how furious Mike Krzyzewski is. In the early going, they were knocking down shots, and, for, uh, and Duke wasn't. It was a tale of two halves. Duke, though, goes on a big run midway through the second half. Nolan Smith jumped up and sends it down. He had 29 points, and although Duke missed 15 of its 23-pointers, Andre Dawkins buries this one. He had 14, and by this point, the Blue Devils start to have some comfort, and they can breathe. They settled down. They started making shots. The six-man Duke's crowd was involved, and they started to run away with it. Duke ends up winning it by 16 points, but it wasn't that easy. Uh, speaking of not easy, how about Kansas? Had won 68 straight home games, but going up against the best defensive team in the Big 12, Nebraska. Jayhawks down five and a half, down 10 early in the second half until Markeith Morris 
gives Kansas a one point lead. Well, so high scoring team finds a way to continue to make threats, and they came out there knocking down shots. Ashante Jones knocks down his only shot of the game. Four point play, Nebraska within two, but back come the Jayhawks. Too much NBA talent, including Marcus Morris. Yeah, you can't cut off everything. They can score from inside and the three point line. Nebraska has one decent opportunity at the end, but a pretty well contested look by Caleb Walker doesn't go down, so it's 69 straight wins at home for Kansas, 17-0 on the season. How about Syracuse? Like Kansas, unbeaten going into Saturday. Jim Beheim and Syracuse, though, losing their superstar midway through the first half. Watch Chris Joseph bang his head on the back right on the carrier dome floor. He stayed down for a while, did walk off the court, but did not return, scoring just two points. So without him, how would the Qs do? Well, the first half buzzer beat it by C.J. Fair helps. And in the second half, the Brazilian freshman who's been in the doghouse, Fab Mello, woke up. Absolutely. That helps them get 55% from the field, high percentage shots at point-blank range. Viva Brazil. The <laughs> Orange hold the Bearcats to just 31% shooting and win it with ease, 67-52. Syracuse, 18-0, out of the gate. Also in the Big East, we had the craziest finish of the day. It was right out of the movie Hoosiers. Preston Knowles leading the way for Louisville, although the Cardinals were asleep at the wheel at home for most of the game. Darius Johnson owed him the reverse. Marquette led by 18, Adrian, with six minutes to go, and that's when Knowles woke up. Look at the point, but he was aggressive, didn't hesitate, and he wasn't fishing for his shots coming down the home stretch. He had just two points before the half, 15 after the break, 4-4 four four from beyond the arc. All of a sudden, the Cardinals are within one, 25 seconds left, and here's that Hoosiers moment. Senior Dwight Bikes, you're up one, no shot clock. Why are you even shooting the ball? Poor decision, time, and score. This will haunt them. This was a huge opportunity for them to get fouled, make some free throws, and go home with Could the win. Had a Big East win on the road instead. Back comes Knowles. He's triple team wisely, unselfishly. Passes up to Kyle Couric, who hits the lay-in in traffic. Louisville has its first lead of the second half, and Jimmy Butler does not get the shot that Marquette wanted. No, a little too little too late. Their heart was broken on that poor decision. Major comeback for the Louisville Cardinals to improve to 3-1 and one in the rugged Big East. In the SEC, how about the comeback hosted by Tennessee? Tony Jones coaching as Bruce Pearl still serving that suspension. John Jenkins had 21 for the Commodores. Vanderbilt up 16. What's the mentality at this point if you're Tennessee? Well, they've got to find a way to make some stops and get out and turn the tables and run like that play. Tennessee gets 12 points from Cameron Tatum and then Scotty Hobson rocking the high fade from the early 90s. 1991, Larry Johnson would be proud. Looking like Dennis Hobson, <laughs> he had 16 points. Tobias Harris finally gives Tennessee the lead. They crawl all the way back from 16 points down in the first half. Then with three seconds left, Vanderbilt looking for the Christian Leitner. Uh-uh, one of 21 turnovers. Commodores blow a chance to get a road win in the SEC, just like we saw Marquette do against Louisville. So a very big day for a lot of big teams in college basketball and some fantastic comebacks on Saturday as well. For Adrian Branch, I'm Steve Bunin. Cassidy, back to you. Coming up, we'll go all access with the Pitt Panthers and get an inside look at how Jamie Dixon conducts his up-tempo practices. Stick around. What makes a house a home are the people who live there. ESPN, the home court of college hoops. This January, follow Tennis's Greats Down Under on ESPN2 in the year's first major. The Australian Open. Coverage continues through January 30th, only on ESPN2. Games 15 starts January 27th on ESPN.
Since Jamie Dixon took over as head coach of the Pitt Panthers in 2003, he's proven he knows how to win. He currently has the highest winning percentage in Big East history. He also became the first head coach in school history to lead Pitt to seven consecutive 20-win seasons and seven straight NCAA tournaments. And earlier this season, he eclipsed the 200-win mark for his career. As we go all access with the Pitt Panthers, we get an inside look at Dixon's winning formula. Uh, five man we will be getting into. We're doing some five on plays, plays that we didn't execute in our last game well enough. All right, those are the ones we'll review and go through briefly. Okay. Come on, nothing was there. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. Cut hard, cut hard. Get a good piece. Screen, screen, screen. Screen. Talib, you just get in the way, Talib. You just get in the way. Do you know plays, Talib? Come on, Tlaib. It's got to come up. It's got to get to you at some point. Jonathan, where's the ball? Go get it, Jonathan. Come on, Blues. Get a stop. Get a stop. Get a stop. Stay there. To the ball, Jonathan. Too much. Too much, Jonathan. Know where your guy is. See the ball, Tlaib. We can't split us, guys, on the red. We can't jump in the air. You got to be foot and feet together. You jump in the air, you're an easy split. Do it again. Do it again. Come on now. All right, hedging with the four and five. Three-quarter front from everybody, any post situation. Three-quarter front from anybody. We're going to run a lot of plays, posting up guards here today as well, right? Uh, a little higher, Brad. Too low, too low. Foul, foul. Bad defense. Too low, got Brad, on that curl, that extend. Too low. One foul, one foul. Trayvon, that's not a good shot. Trayvon, please listen to me. That's not a good shot. Three quarter, three quarter. Whoa. Ah, to leave, to leave. You got to be ready to extend that, Jonathan. That's one you got to trail. You got to trail that. Did I see that correctly? Did you guys see that? I don't think he came off the screen tight enough. You, you can't go underneath both of the screen and your man. All right, here we go. Throwing in crowds. Hands, Gilbert, off the knees, off the knees, Gilbert. Length, play with length. Sprint, sprint, Ashton, sprint, Ashton. Drop, drop, Gilbert. Gil, you should be down there. The ball's there. You're, you're, yeah. You got to get there, Gil. You guys driving. He's driving below you, and you're still here. Your man's down there. You got to keep the ball down here, and then obviously get down and get the rotation. Open guy. You got to be there. Come on, Gilbert. You're a senior. All right? There's no more jokes about it. You're a senior. You have to be our leader. Here we go. Seniors have to lead. Four, four, four. Ah, screen the defense, Cam. Screen the defense, Cam. Screen the defense, Lamar. Five, 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 five. Rumby. Good Trey. Again, Gil, Gil, we still want to be able to dig down, dig down, or pinch and not lose vision, okay? So you can pinch like this, pinch like this, and try not to commit that back foot. Not commit that back foot. Press team, 1-3-1, one, one, we're in corners, corners, all right? They do a little 1-3-1. One, one. We're going to go against it here right now. Here we go. One, two, three, here go. we go. Here we go. Nice pass. Man plays, man plays. Every day we, want, we come out here trying to get better, and uh, I, I think we've, we're, we're, we're at that point now where uh, we haven't been comfortable with how we've played. We, we think we can take another step, and, and I think our players realize that right now, and that's, that's most important. Ah, stay on the ground. Good face. Good face. Don't put it above your head right away, nah, uh, Brad. Back cut. Somebody back cut. Standing. Gotta take that, Cam. Same way, same way, same way. 
God, Gary, you got to make a play out of that. You just put it out here. See the guy. See the guy bounce pass or get it up higher. God, you got to make a play out of that, Gary. You have to. Lamar, what are you doing? Yeah, you still take him out here. You back cut from here. You got to take him out here and then back cut. You did nothing. You understand? Does everybody understand that? We get overplayed on a play. You don't just stop. You take him out, then you back cut and spread him out. Take the defense out wide. God, shortcut. That's the same thing, Lamar. It's always the shortcut. It's not because you went too hard, too far. You went too short, too easy. That's a wrap on the ESPN3.com Halftime Report. I'm Cassidy Hubbard. Enjoy the second half. to start the second half. Analyst Abby Wayner chatting with Amanda Butler. Abby? Coach, eight of your 11 players have scored offensively. You have 13 offensive boards. What do you like from your team on that end? Well, obviously, that's great team basketball and good balance. We've got to continue that, but I, I really love the hustle plays that we're making, uh, the rebounds that we're tracking down, and just our team energy overall. What do you guys have to do to play a full 40 minutes here tonight? We've got to sustain. Uh, he's a great coach. They're a great ball club. They're going to make adjustments. We've got to be ready for those adjustments and their answers and, and still play Florida basketball. Great, Coach. Thank you very much. Abby, thank you. And, yes, Amanda Butler, both as a player and a coach, has been around the Southeastern Conference long enough to know that Georgia head coach Andy Landers is a master strategist. If I were Coach Landers, I would wonder how to get Portia Phillips and Jasmine James more involved in the offense in the second half. Phillips with only three points in that first half. She's been averaging a double-double, two early fouls for her. James averaging over 12 points a game to lead the Lady Bulls. Bulldogs, and she was held to only two. The Gators looking for their first win at Stegman Coliseum in seven years. Meantime, the Lady Bulldogs trying to keep pace with the Lady Volunteers of Tennessee and stay perfect in conference play. Kara Capuano and former Duke All-American Abby Wayner with you as we get set for the second half. What kind of adjustments, Abby, do you think Coach Landers was trying to make it break? It's still some energy and some defensive Discipline. The offense will come. That's not where they can be concerned at right now. Right now, they gave up 37 points to Florida, a team who is having their way on the board. Coach Andy Landers, they are based around rebounding, and that's where they need to start in the second half. The Gators shot 48.5% in the first half to just under 29% for Georgia. Portia Phillips controlling the ball. We didn't see her a lot in the first half because of foul trouble. Rebound to Didi Madu. Jordan Jones. I'm telling you what, the Sewanee Georgia native is feeling it today. Her shots look very confident. And that's the best thing that a three-point shooter can do is score in other ways, to look like you're going to attack the basket, pull for that mid-range jumper. Then the three-point shot will start to open up. Castle wanted a little high-low love from Phillips there. She's working hard on the blocks, calling for it. Ransford's long shot won't fall. Pass ahead to Dina Allen. Kicks it out to Jones. Traveled on the way. Nope, that was a foul. Excuse me. Monika Ransford doing a really good job of getting there to take the charge. She saw Allen looking to penetrate, looking to attack. All she had to do was keep her position. Very good defensive play by the freshman. That offensive foul by Allen, her second in the game. Phillips working on Madu, kicks it off to Mitchell. It's the second time we've seen Meredith Mitchell hit a nice bank shot on the fly. That's a really tough angle to hit that shot. You're penetrating left and needing, needing to bring it back around across the right side of your body. Very good body control by Meredith Mitchell. Zania Stewart had a gigantic first half, number 13 in blue for the Gators. 6-4 center got the start today. Very active offensively. 
a big part of the offensive rebounding prowess of half number one for Florida. Shot clock at five. Another offensive board. Mitchell will be called for the foul. Meredith Mitchell getting it done on the offensive end for Georgia, attacking left and finishing with her right. That's a very athletic play, making the defense fly by and then finishing. That just the first personal foul for Meredith Mitchell. <laughs> Allen hits the first free throw. And if you're in Georgia, defensively, you play a very good half-court 30-second possession. You force Florida into a not very good shot at the end of the shot clock and then allow an offensive rebound and then foul. There couldn't be a worse progression of plays on a defensive end. Mitchell in transition. It's blocked by the backboard on the pass attempt. Mitchell hustles back for the rebound on the other end. Interesting, Georgia's shots. You wouldn't think this was their home gym. Oh. Allen heads back to the line again. What an active game we've seen for the junior transfer out of Pensacola Junior College. Second personal foul on Renika Ransford. The, the pace right now of the second half, it's very up and down. You see Florida is trying to push and run in transition. Georgia, they don't have a wide open shot in transition. That's okay. Pull it back, set up an offensive play. Dina Allen with a double double in this game already 11 points, 10 rebounds. She had a career high eight rebounds in the loss at home against Tennessee on Thursday. Coach Butler definitely getting the best of number 12 here in conference play. Phillips. I think for the Lady Bulldogs to get back into this game, they're going to have to see a lot more of number 21. And I like that. That's an aggressive take, and that's something that she wasn't doing in the first half, was attacking the basket hard. It is a one-woman show, meantime, for the orange and blue. Dina Allen, pleased to meet you. <laughs> Welcome to the Southeastern Conference. Hey, SEC coaches, I've got a scouting report for you. She's a JUCO transfer, and Dina Allen's means business. Sometimes.
We welcome you back to the SEC Network Women's Basketball Game of the Week. The Gators have built on that halftime lead. Now 44-28 over Georgia Abbey, and one player is shining. And Dina Allen right now with 14 points and 11 rebounds. 17 minutes to go in the game, and she already has a double-double. And what I really like from this Florida team is that you earn your playing time. Nine players have started in games for Amanda Butler. Dina Allen was one of them today because of the way she's been playing and results are showing. We talked to Coach Butler this morning at shoot around and she said Dina is really becoming a threatening scorer, improving every game in SEC play. And if you look at her demeanor, she's always the same. She's always playing hard, talking to her teammates, never too up, never too down. This is a confident three-point shot from Bernika Ransford. First three-pointer of the game for the Lady Bulldogs. Threes helped Florida build that lead in the first half. Will threes help the Lady Bulldogs cut it in the second? Shot clock at eight. Madhu thought dribble, shoot, I don't know, foot drag. Y'all walk. <laughs> 14th turnover for the Gators. Georgia's defense has definitely picked up now. That's the second time so far that Florida in the second half, the shot clock has worked its way all the way down to single digits. They struggle in a half court execution. Good defense by Georgia. Still down 13 though. They need to start to show some of that flair and energy on the offensive end. James creates a little space. That's what I thought we'd see much earlier from number 10 in white. Well, hello, Lady Bulldogs fans. And Amanda Butler decides she wants to talk about it. Gators a bit flustered by Jasmine James and company. They are, and I love this move. Just a quick little hesitation. If only with her eyes and her head, James drew the defense up, thinking she was going to take that shot. And a nice little in and out move for the pull up. It's taken her a while to get going, but that's the offensive capabilities that Jasmine James has. James, over 12 points per game, only two of nine from the floor in this one. 14th in the SEC in scoring. She is their offensive leader. Has it been Gators' defense? Has it been her offense? What's been off? I, I, I want to say it's more on the offensive end for Georgia that nobody's been very aggressive attacking the basket, especially Jasmine James. But she is their playmaker. And not a whole lot of plays have been going through her, whether she ends up shooting it or dishing it. We haven't seen much action and playmaking from her yet tonight. That's a good start. 12 seconds left on the shot clock as Florida inbounds the ball. In the hands of Allen. A oh, great drop pass. Just when you thought Florida might get a bit panicked. What execution? That's a tough pass to make for a guard, let alone for Didi Madu. 11 points now for Azania Stewart. Calmly laid it in. You wouldn't have known the shot clock was at two at that point. Portia Phillips wants it. Perimeter players are trying to get it to her. Two on the shot clock when she threw up that one. Not a single Georgia player was in the paint there crashing the offensive boards. Madu now trying to work on Phillips, loses a handle. That one went out of bounds off the hands of Tamika Willis. It will be Florida ball when we return. Gators steady, leading by 13.
Welcome back to Stegman Coliseum. The Gators maintain command on the road at Georgia. Next week, the SEC Network Women's Basketball Game of the Week on the road in Columbia, South Carolina, the capital city, and the Gamecocks hosting Tierney Jenkins and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Jenkins has just been a force this season, one of the league leaders in scoring and rebounding. But the Gamecocks, one of those teams that can surprise and Valerie Nyanima, one of Abby's very favorite <laughs> shooting guards, not only in the league, but in the nation. She is, and I say this in the best way possible. She shoots like a guy does. She has that strength to get that jump shot off. But however, I wonder how much that ACL injury is gonna affect some of her athleticism and her scoring ability. She did come back from an ACL injury very quickly as Jordan Jones continues to feel totally at home. The Georgia native with 10 now in the game. We talked at the very beginning of the game about both these coaches. Everybody knows what Andy Landers can do. Amanda Butler has coached an absolutely pristine game and that she called a timeout a couple minutes ago when Georgia started picking up the pressure. You can feel the crowd getting into the game. Her team was starting to panic back on their heels. Very good timeout call to get her team to regroup. Meredith Mitchell knocks it out of bounds to bring up the coaching prowess of Amanda Butler. And the great Pat Summit actually complimenting Florida's coach earlier this week on a league-wide conference call, saying that she sees a lot of herself in Butler. Coaches with high expectations from their players and look to do whatever they can to get the best from them. Phillips on the break. Great decision to pass it to Miller, and Kyla Miller only with four points in this game. Back-to-back -back freshman of the week nods. She's been very quiet. She has, and we talked to Coach Landers about why she's playing so much better, and he said opportunities have arisen for Kalita Miller, and that's a very good example of her teammates finding her in transition. Shot clock at 10 now for the Gators. Bold attempt by Jennifer George amid the double team. Uh, right here in transition, Portia Phillips really, Portia Phillips, very good job of attacking the basket, forcing the defense to make a decision. In that case, defense didn't really make a decision, instead made a pass for an easy layup. 15th turnover by Florida on the other end as Georgia continues to try to cut into that Gators lead. Shot clock at 10 now for the Lady Bulldogs. Offensive rebound controlled by Willis. That was a great pass back to Willis, rewarding the effort. And Willis with the D on the other end. A little too fired up. Meredith Mitchell calms him down a bit. And the foul will be called, sending Mitchell to the line. Azania Stewart, her third. And that's what makes Jasmine James so good, is her ability to get to the basket and create opportunities for her teammates. She saw that pass coming the entire time. That's what good guards do. Mitchell hits the first free throw. Hasn't been too solid at the free throw line this season. Just over 51%, but that was clutch. Seven points and three rebounds in the game so far for Georgia's only junior on the roster. Upperclassman Finn, one junior, one senior. And if you're Georgia right now, you start making a comeback, you're not going to win the game in one possession. Scoring on the offensive end, getting a defensive stop next, taking it one play at a time. Little kick there from Portia Phillips. Coach Landers positioning Tamika Willis where he wants her in the press. Mitchell almost got a hand on that one. She's second on the team in steals to Jasmine James. Ten point game.
Looks like Didi Madu is adjusting an earring or something's going on over there. All right, now we're gonna try to inbound the ball. Fastest player for Florida breaks right through the press and dishes to shine. The speed of Lenita Bartley on display on that one. And that's really all it takes to be a press is one good pass. You get past that first line and you're looking at some of the so slower players. Tamika Willis simply couldn't handle Lenita Bartley. Mitchell for three. Willis got a hand on it, but she needed to squeeze it. Georgia ball when we return. 51-39, Gators still with the advantage. It was a 13-point edge at the half. You break the press, you can hang on to your lead. Battle out of trouble. Florida coach Amanda Butler started her seventh different starting lineup this season coming into this game, but always steady. Number 33, Jordan Jones has delivered. And Jordan Jones has done it in a variety of ways today. We see her knocking down the three, but she's got it to the paint. Hitting a couple floaters, pulling up in transition. What we're not seeing, though, is Jordan Jones on the boards. She only has three rebounds, but I wish we could keep track of the amount of tips that she's got. She's been very active all game. She's created rebounds for her teammates, there especially deep in the paint. You're absolutely right. Lady Bulldogs still trying to cut into that Gators lead. Every time they score or get a defensive stop, it's like Gators come right back the next possession. Willis calling for it. Georgia keeps it again. It was tipped out of bounds by a Florida player. Uh, to go back to the point that you were just making about Florida always having an answer. They have six new players on this team, four of which are two true freshmen. They're not panicking, and they're not rattled at all by the atmosphere or Georgia's run. Well, apparently Georgia's freshman isn't rattled either by a poor shooting day. Kalita Miller with seven, only her third made basket on seven attempts in the game. What an athletic move to the basket by Madhu for the putback. His offensive rebounds continue to be the hallmark of Florida's success. Brittany Shine now attached to the hip of Paulita Miller. She's proven herself in the past couple games being able to knock down big shots. 
foul called on the Florida Gators. And that one on 24, DeAndre Young, her first. Brittany Shine checks back out. Three-pointer long. Offensive rebound. Well, yeah. I'd take it right to the rack, too, if I looked up and nobody was guarding me. What a heads-up play by James. That will be a blocking foul on Jasmine James. Ramping up the physicality here. And Coach Landers, I think, not happy with that foul. You can't impede the offensive space like that. She didn't move, but she also didn't allow the offensive player to move, thus creating a foul and perhaps taking away a bit of the energy that was rising in the building. There was a momentum for Georgia. It's back. <laughs> Just like that. Allen on the drive. Jump ball called. Possession arrow Florida. And here, Jordan Jones dropped to the deck across she the court. She got thrown to the direct deck, I think. It's, it's physical. Jones drives baseline. Oh, Bartley denied. Thought that was going to be another putback for Florida. And a foul call on Ransford. Her third. Ransford confused just as the fans are and that's a tough foul when players are simply playing hard there were 10 players on the floor for that possession hustling after the basketball you don't like to see that hustle taken away As florida inbounds the ball looking for stewart kicking it back out Bartley walks in the lane. Good idea, one too many steps. We're at Stegman Coliseum. Abby Wainer and Kara Capuano with you as Florida commits its 17th turnover in the game. Nine point ball game. Gators have led the majority of this game. But the Lady Bulldogs on an 11 4 run over the last three and a half minutes to whittle the lead. A foul called on Renika Ransford. She had her elbows out on that screen, whether it was a moving, moving screen, it was an illegal screen. She didn't like that call, but, but it was a very good call by the referees. You have to have your arms in and stay set to set that screen. Fourth personal foul on Renika Ransford, but she stays on the floor. Deep down low to Stewart. Tested by Willis. Cross court to Jones. You knew that was hitting the bottom as soon as she shot it. I did anyway. <laughs> great, great pass by Jatara Bonds. You can see the chemistry there with her and Jordan Jones. Jones saw her defender turn her head, just a quick little flash down to the baseline. Bonds knew where she was the whole time. Miller off the screen. Rebound by Phillips, keeps it alive. Really chippy in the paint. The foul on Didi Madu, her third. If you're one of the leaders on these teams, this is where you grab your team together. You say, look, this team it's getting, or this game is getting physical, it's high paced. Do not bail them out. Mitchell, James, Miller. In the backcourt for the Lady Bulldogs. Phillips and Willis up front. Zania Stewart gets a hand on it and keeps it. What an athletic play from the 6'4 center. 11th turnover for the Lady Bulldogs. Coach Butler telling Bonds to slow down, set up an offense, use the clock. Willis with the block. Some really quality minutes for number 23 in white in the second half. Mitchell. 
A long two for Meredith Mitchell. Nine point game. Back up to Bonds. Five on the shot clock for the Gators. I wonder if Allen knows. And a whistle with one second left on the shot clock. The foul is called against Portia Phillips. That is a potential momentum pressure for Georgia. We'll be right back. We here to give you what you want, here to give you what you need, here to give you what you came for, came for, we came here to rock right now, yeah, we came here to rock right now. We here to give you what you want, here to give you what you need, here to give you what you came for, came for, we came here to rock right now, yeah, we came here to rock. Note to self, never dance on camera when Mike Pelkey is working the machine in the truck. Florida with a 10-point <laughs> advantage over Georgia right now. Again, we've seen the Lady build Bulldogs build momentum, Abby, bring all of these passionate fans into the game, and Florida keeps managing to take the win back out of the sales. Really good execution by Florida. There hasn't been a single moment of panic for this team, but you have to give it to Georgia of the comeback that they've mounted here. They've had a couple of players step up, the players that they need to in Jasmine James, but look at that discrepancy there. The difference in the game has been offensive boards. Stewart with another one for Florida. Allen trying to get it to Stewart, drives instead. Great hands by Meredith Mitchell to force the jump ball. Lady Bulldogs possession. Meredith Mitchell's been really active on both ends of the floor. This is what makes a defender a smart defender, and that she was able to get her hands on the ball and not foul. She gets, she creates steals like that all the time. James draws the double team. Mitchell there, tries to keep it alive. Georgia ball. We asked Coach Landers this morning about Meredith Mitchell. This is a player who played 10 minutes a game as a freshman, but then as a sophomore and then again as a junior this season. 
about 30 minutes a game, and he said, we just couldn't put her out on the floor when she was a freshman. But she was always learning, and now she learns quickly. She's incredibly coachable, and that's all you can ask for as a head coach. Great listener and one of the smartest players on the floor. That's what Coach Landers told us. Portia Phillips draws the double team. Nifty move to get away from it. And she's patting her stat sheet with some offensive rebounds as well. Well, you know what? We keep talking about the offensive boards for Florida. Georgia's been getting on the offensive boards in the second half. That foul on Tamika Willis, her second. First. Again, great move by Portia Phillips, but nobody's there. She stays with it, and that's what they always say. Nobody knows where the ball is going to end up better than the shooter does. Coach Landers wants to talk about it. Eight-point ball game now, Abby. We saw a 13-point Florida lead, whittled down, built back up, whittled down, but now in single digits. What do you think Coach Landers is telling the team here? <laughs> I can't help but always be so intrigued by his timeout. And this is just the way that he coaches. He's intense. He demands things of his players, and they know how to respond to him. And sometimes you see, you're like, man, well, they're, they're coming back from being down a lot. And they've had a great comeback here. Some players are getting on the offensive boards. Jasmine James is making things happen, but he never settles. And that's why he's become one of the best coaches in the history of women's college basketball, is that he's always demanding more out of his players. When they need praise at the end of the game, he'll be the first one to deliver it. 27 NCAA tournament appearances for Andy Landers. 18 Sweet 16s, including last year when a lot of people were overlooking the Lady Bulldogs, and they made it again. And referencing last year, that team started off the season 16 and up. And like you said, many people did not expect that, and they were in large part led by Ashley Houts and Angel Robinson, two players who have since graduated. So this is an entirely different look for Jordan. After a clock reset, the officials convening to discuss which team should have possession here. What are we looking at on the clock? We're in great shape. Quick resolution. Georgia with the ball. Florida exerting moderate pressure. Meredith Mitchell at the top feeds Willis. She was calling for it. And Didi Madu wishes she had that one back. Ten We've seconds on the shot clock. We've seen Madu crashing the board. She just needs to grab the ball with two hands instead of tipping it around. What a three for the leading scorer of Georgia. Jasmine James with the clutch three, Meredith Mitchell with the steal, and finish. Three-point game, 7 nothing run for the Lady Bulldogs, and about 10 seconds after Abby Wainer signaled the timeout, Coach Butler did. And this is the most energy and team-oriented I have seen Georgia. I've been watching them go to their timeouts this entire game. Throughout the course of the game, they have some players walking. They're a little bit slow getting there. They're not really talking to each other, not many high fives. But when things get going, I love seeing that they're coming together as a team. That's what they need to do. A couple of very strong possessions for Georgia. First offensively, Abby. Really heads up play by Portia Phillips, knowing that she was going to attract the double team. Just one quick pass, and Meredith Mitchell getting into the passing lanes like she does. Great finish in transition. Got a ball game now. Three-point game at Stegman Coliseum. And the 
Southeastern Conference, a game can turn on a dime, and we've seen that happen here. Georgia on a 14-5 run in the last five and a half minutes. Mitchell again with the hands. The foul called on Dina Allen, who had her pocket picked and got frustrated about it. It wasn't, it was more of an inadvertent foul here as Dina Allen just wants to make the hustle play. Meredith Mitchell with the tip. She was trying to get the ball. She actually got a piece of it. Yeah, but you can't, you also can't take out the other player. There is that. <laughs> That's part of the rule. <laughs> Jasmine James starting to refocus her offense. Another stop for Georgia. James feeds Phillips. Down to Willis. Welcome to Mika Willis to the party. Allen. No, but an offensive board for Florida. Jordan Jones falling down. It was off Portia Phillips' hand. Florida ball. Georgia has taken its first lead since the two to nothing mark in this game. That's been a while. It's been a completely revamped Georgia team, and it's starting with defense. It's Meredith Mitchell getting in the passing lanes, the guards pressure on the balls. Their defense is becoming their offense. One point game at the four minute mark. A foul is called against Meredith Mitchell. Her second, and there's a timeout on the floor. Number 11's been a big spark plug for these Lady Bulldogs. The fans not fussed with the call. Well, the puppy looks a little sad, but the girls are happy because they're Lady Bulldogs fans. And Georgia has taken back a lead, Abby. They have. They've done it in a variety of ways, one of which is interior passing. We've been talking about Willis, and she just buries the defense. 
down under the paint. Porsche uh, Phillips doing a really good job hitting the high post and making that little bounce pass inside. 18 fouls committed by Georgia. Five team fouls on the board for the Gators. As Juanita Bartley steps to the line. Hits the first one. Something else to look at is that Florida, they've been hurting themselves and they've turned the ball over 20 times. But Georgia, they're really executing on that end that they've created 17 points off this Florida tournament. Bartley's first two points of the game. Jordan Jones checks out. Dina Allen had a very strong mid-second half, checks back in. Dina Allen with a double-double in this game, fifth Gator to achieve a double-double this season. First from the perimeter player. Florida putting on a little full court pressure and falling back into a 2-3 zone. Going to try and take away those paint points for Georgia. Shot clock at seven now. Willis sets a screen for James. We've seen that a lot in this game. Great defense deep in the shot clock. A foul. And we, we've seen the way that the refs have been calling this game. As, as the energy starts going, the physicality is turned up. They're keeping a very good handle on this game, not letting it get out of control. But you don't want to bail teams out in those situations where the shot clock is low. Fourth foul on number 12, Dina Allen for Florida. James, deep three, can it? Fourteen for number ten. And an answer in the lane from Jatera Bonds. Florida's last field goal before that make came at the 9-17 mark. That three by James pulling Florida out of their zone. They're back into a man-to-man. -man. Shot clock at eight. James draws the double, dishes to Phillips. Jump ball called, Florida with the possession arrow. That was such a great move by Portia Phillips to wait for the defender to move out of the way and just right there wide open for the layup, denied. And I'm really impressed with the skill set that Portia Phillips has on the block. We've seen a variety of moves that she's really incorporated into her offensive ability. Making a counter move is part of that. She just needs to slow down on the finish. The steal for James. Mitchell for three. Point advantage for Georgia. Butler wants to talk about it. There were three players that made that play possible, and it's the three players that this Georgia team is hinged on. Jasmine James pushing in transition. She finds Portia Phillips. Meredith Mitchell trailing the play, and she did a really good job of getting in the eye line, the eyesight of Portia Phillips. And when Phillips drew the double team, all she had to do was turn around. She saw Meredith Mitchell right behind her, who nails the three. I think the scouting report on Georgia, Abby, has to be they're never out of the game. Because early in the second half, Florida's lead was built to 16 points. And you could really feel, like you said, a lack of energy from the Lady Bulldogs. They weren't running in timeouts. They just didn't have it. And now, it's a three-point advantage for Georgia. Everyone in the building is on their feet, pretty much. In their last seven games, Georgia has uh, played, whether they've won or lost, it's been by an average of five and a half points. 
This is a team that isn't unfamiliar with close games in the waning minutes. They Short. have found ways to win. 24 to 9 run in the last 920 for the Lady Bulldogs. Mitchell again. Good patience there. I'm really impressed with the way that Jasmine James handles the pace of the game in the second half. You talk about some of the great point guards that have come out of Georgia. And they've been really reliant on those type of players. And Deanna Newell and Ashley Houts. They've been having to play point guard by committee. Jasmine James has filled that role today. Portia Phillips with the offensive rebound. Kick out to James. Boy, is she big shot JJ today. Wow. And again, who makes the pass? It's Portia Phillips. Patient, decisive offense on the other end for Florida to answer. Jasmine James, two points in the first half. 15 points in the second half. And it's her aggressive mentality that because she started attacking the basket, in the second half, it opened up her outside shot. She's hit it from almost every spot on the court in times when they need it the most. She's not afraid to attack Zania Stewart in the middle and her teammates, namely Portia Phillips, doing a really good job of finding James when she's left open by Florida. The sophomore out of Memphis, Tennessee, with a league record five SEC Freshman of the Week honors last year. You can really feel that growth from year one to year two now. Averages almost 35 minutes a game, Abby. Third highest in the SEC, and you brought up Ashley Houts, who was always the Iron Woman of this conference for what felt like a decade running, you know, the four years that she was here. Jasmine James is assuming that role. And you look at it last year, it was senior Ashley Houts in that position with freshman Jasmine James behind her. So she had a year to play under Ashley Houts. And what Houts brought to that team was the tangible and tangibles of a point guard and that's what I've seen in the second half from Jasmine James being able to control the pace of her team she's been the heart of this comeback Meredith Mitchell has made plays Portia Phillips has made plays but it's all been directed by Jasmine James Abby remind us what's at stake in this game for these two teams well Florida it's simply getting a win here at Georgia and it's a program that Amanda built Butler is trying to build and for the Georgia Lady Bulldogs their nemesis in the SEC has always been Tennessee, the other undefeated team right now sitting at the top of the standings. Mitchell hounded by the defense of Allen, who's out there with four fouls. Florida just called its last timeout. Lady Bulldogs have two left. To complement the four-point edge. Foul called on Jordan Jones, her second. That's the seventh team foul for the Gators, so we're in the bonus situation. Jasmine James shooting one and one. And Georgia yet to prove themselves from the line statistically on the season. We said earlier they're 11th in the conference from the line. It's going to be key for them to be able to knock down some free throws here in the last minute. That was a pretty good one. James, a 63% free throw shooter on the season. Another clutch shot for number 10. Dee Dee Madu checking in for the Florida Gators. She's been so active all night on the offensive boards. She's going to need to be there to give her team some opportunities to score. Allen with the rebound. Gators down five. Bonds in the lane. Bold take for the true freshman. The double team comes. George almost loses it. Jordan Jones trying to argue that Portia Phillips traveled with the basketball, but instead it's the third foul called on number 33. And, and you know what? I agree with Jordan Jones. It, it was a travel, but you know what? The play's been called. 
And Jordan Jones, she is a leader. She's a captain for Florida. The case, the case has been made. You're playing in a three-point game right now, and you're one of your leading three-point shooters. Move on. And I, I'm able to say that because that was always my biggest problem. <laughs> yes, Abby, we all learn from our mistakes. Portia Phillips hits the front end of the one and one. Misses the second one. And guess who came up with it? Meredith Mitchell. Unfortunately, it was a full body roll on the back end. So it's unfortunate when hustle like that, all out diving for the ball, that heart translates into a turnover. But nonetheless, the heart was there for Meredith Mitchell. Andy Landers calls a timeout. Gives Florida an opportunity to chat a little bit more about this four-point game. And we are looking forward to just as thrilling a game next Sunday. Columbia, South Carolina, the Gamecocks host the Crimson Tide of Alabama. South Carolina knows what it's like to lose at home to this spunky Florida squad. Early on, it just seemed like the Gators were totally in control, Abby, and somewhere it changed. What changed to you? It started on the defensive end. That they, When you're in a funk as a team offensively, you can't get any baskets to go. There's no sort of rhythm. Well, you have to turn it around and make things happen on the defensive end. Meredith Mitchell did a great job of getting in those passing lanes. They got some easy buckets in transition. Finally, when they're able to get that going, okay, now we can execute in the half court. Former Duke All-American Abby Wainer and Kara Capuano with you on a Sunday afternoon at Stegman Coliseum. A couple proud dogs fans there, Lady Bulldogs. Erased a huge deficit in the second half to take a four-point lead. Gators still clawing for offensive rebounds. Running out of time, though. If you're Florida here, face guard. You put Dee Madu, a long athletic player, on the ball. Now she's being taken off the ball to have extra protection in the backcourt. But face guard, go for the steal. If you don't get the steal, you have to foul right away. James gets the pass, throws it ahead to Anne Marie Armstrong, who's just waiting. Somebody help me, Anne Marie says. <laughs> and you know what? She had Colleen and Miller alone under the basket. She did, but I, I can't blame her. Just control Anne, the ball. She's a little turnover prone. So a good call to pull it back, make the sure play by putting somebody on the free throw line. Phillips again. Hits the front end of a one-on-one. -on -one. We've seen that recently for number 21. Florida, again, they have no timeouts, so they can't call a timeout to set up a play. If I were them, I would send some people long here right now to get a quick three off. Five-point game. Make it six. And only six seconds left. It's going to be a road game that the Gators are going to wish that they had back. Had a 16-point lead in this second half led by double digits for the majority of it. But you asked Coach Butler, what is it going to take to play 40 minutes? And Georgia was the team that managed that in this day. The Lady Bulldogs fans who showed up at Stegman Coliseum on a Sunday on their feet, they love it. Saw one of the best comebacks in the conference season so far. The Georgia Lady Bulldogs get the win over Florida, 70 to 64. Paced by 18 points from Jasmine James, 15 points and steady, great defense from Meredith Mitchell. As Georgia stays perfect in the Southeastern Conference, now 4-0 in the SEC, 14-3 on the season. Enough to get the Lady Bulldogs back in the top 25? We'll find out on Monday. For my analyst, Abby Wainer, and our entire terrific SEC Network crew, I'm Kara Capuano. We'll see you next week from South Carolina, Crimson Tide at the Gamecocks, 2 Eastern. The proceeding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN Regional Television, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports. Georgia wins 70-64 in dramatic fashion.